Shortly after I recorded the last video, I ran out of fuel in the steam engine and this thing came to a screeching halt. We're gonna have to build some sort of a farm that gives us uh, some, some, some kelp in order to power this thing. All right, I built this massive miner. Okay, placing in the minecart, giving it a push. Got it. I've dug out the general area where I want this thing to go as far as depth. I just kind of dug like a little bit of a trench here. Here we are. Give it a push. Okay. Good. Didn't miss any blocks. It makes me happy. This thing is just crazy. Row number two. Okay, I've laid out circles for the two tanks that we're going to use to harvest the kelp. All right, I've got one of the three layers done here as far as just the mechanics. So we have the harvester in the middle, and then down here is where the kelp is going to go. Water bucket. Water bucket. Water bucket. Kelp, kelp, kelp. Kelp, 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 kelp. More water. Okay, the first layer is built. Okay, the second layer, the machine is working. All right, the first tank is done. I also built a kelp drying and packing system thingy-mabob here. So the kelp will come out of these chutes and on the other side too when it's done and it will go here. And then I have encased fans blowing through campfires and that should hopefully dry the kelp before it gets here. I haven't tested that. Then once it gets in here, we have it to, uh, this is our press and it will pack it into dried kelp blocks, which will put it onto this conveyor belt, which will go into this. And this is something new that you can do and create that I haven't shown you guys yet. And that is, it's an encased fan and then shoots going upwards. So basically the encased fan will blow the items upwards. And then up there, there is a funnel and a chest. All right, let's turn this on and see how it goes. Is it gonna dry? Is it gonna dry? Please dry. Please dry. <laughs> oh, dry! There it goes. Okay, good. <laughs> Sweet. All right, so now it's gonna pack it. It's gonna come out. There we go. Well, this isn't working. I don't know why they're not going into the chest. Oh, the arrow. These things always mess me up with the arrow. Let's see. Okay, now it's working. There we go. I want to slow this uh, harvester thingy down. It really doesn't need to be going that fast. So, and also I don't like how I have it geared here from there to there. I want to take it, it's really hard to see, I'm sorry. But there's a, a, there's, it's, there's a shaft going that way and then down here. So basically I want to tie into that shaft and come over here and then do the same on the other side. Man, there is just a steady stream of blocks coming into this chest. I am kind of shocked at how much is being produced here. I think this is going to be like way more than enough. Okay, these gears should slow it down. I have a big cog to a little cog and to a big cog. So that gets us half of the speed. And then uh, this little cog to a big cog again should get us half of that. So half of a half is a quarter. Okay, this thing is significantly slower. That's good. It's geared up from the center. That's good. Okay, so I have created a system by which the items flow up here. Oh, by the way, we got a free cam mod going on. That's nice. So the things are coming up here, the dried kelp blocks. They're going into this chest. Then they are uh, coming out of this uh, funnel here, going across this way into there into this chest and then back across this way. And the reason I did it like that is so that then it would, um, there'd be a constant flow of these blocks. And then also both sets of shoots will get um, the kelp blocks. So hopefully this works. I'm gonna put the shoots in and we're gonna find out. Okay, so far it's okay. It, they're stopping at this chute right here. I'm hoping that eventually that one will fill up and then it'll go back around, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's what I was hoping for. Wow. Okay, and uh, the reason I made this so long is so that I could put in possibly two more of these steam engines. And then if I want more than that, I might have to put, I might have to like move this uh, conveyor system. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's putting out so many kelp blocks. That one farm is putting out so many kelp blocks. I don't even think I need to make the second bin. <laughs> And that means we can turn on our iron farm. Okay, the last problem I had to solve was the flint. It was going into a lava, but that lava it cannot be placed there anymore because I, it's right above this uh, tank that I'm probably going to build. Probably. <laughs> and then, so now what I have it is it's on a conveyor, bringing it over to a little fire right here. Hey, we have a decent amount of iron already. That's really nice. 
That was the whole point of this whole system, was to get some iron. <laughs> but also I wanted to learn how these steam engines worked and be able to create a system that runs well and be able to get like a ton of power, which we have, so I, I'm pretty happy. Alrighty, so I have finished the other kelp farm and everything is working quite swimmingly, actually. We have a decent amount of kelp, kelp blocks. When I built the first farm, it wasn't really kind of uh, producing extra kelp. It's like it was producing about just enough to keep the thing running. The iron farm is producing nicely. I had to make some of the ingots into blocks. I had so much iron in here the other night. What I did at the floor here is I decided not to do those uh, smooth stone blocks, but I decided to do some brick. And then I'm working out how I want the windows to go. I like some of this glass here. I really like how it's kind of like every other and it kind of like draws your eye down there. Like, what is that moving down there? I don't think I need to build two more iron farms. I was originally thinking that that's what I was going to have to do. Uh, I do not have to do that, actually. So we have a little bit of time left in the episode. What I'm thinking about doing in here with this additional space is making a gold farm. And the reason I want a gold farm is because if I'm going to be working with villagers, I'm going to need some golden apples. Right now, the only way to, that I can get gold is by going mining. It'd be really nice and advantageous if I could get a gold farm going. The gold farm goes like this. You take cobblestone and then you grind it into gravel. You take the gravel and then you grind it into sand. But when you gr grind it into sand, there's a chance that you might get clay and flint. So I'll have to pull out the clay and the flint. Anyway, once you get the sand, then what you do is you take the sand and you wash that sand and it gets you more clay. Then you uh, can pack that into clay uh, blocks and you can use one of these presses to do that. And then once you have that, then you can f uh, take that clay and you can uh, put it through a smelter and turn it into terracotta. Then you take the terracotta, grind it into red sand, take the red sand and wash it and it will give you gold ingots. And I have not taken calculus, so I do not know how many steps that was, but it's a lot of steps. And I'm hoping I can fit all of those steps in this space. Okay, I've got the basics of a setup going here. What I have is uh, I've set up three more cobblestone generators. I don't have the drills made yet or anything. And then that's going to come and bring the cobblestone down here onto this conveyor belt, which is going to be going this way, and then up here into two gr sets of grinding wheels. Then I'm going to pull out the flint, and I'm going to leave the clay balls um, that come out of this on the conveyor belt. Then it's going to go into these washing stations, just like those washing stations. So I'm going to have the brass funnels on here, the, uh, this, and then there's going to be depots, and then that will drop the, uh, the clay balls onto a conveyor line that's going to be coming this way, and I think I'm going to bring it back this direction, about to here. All right, so I put in all the tunnels and the funnels and all of the grinding wheels and everything should be ready to go. All I need to do now is just figure out how to power it. Oh yeah, I put in the fans, so I still need to put in like the water and the lava, but everything's ready to go except for that. So now we just have to figure out a way to power it. Also got the drills all in place too, but they're not running yet. Those will be the last things I turn on because I want to get all this other stuff running before we turn on the faucet. That's a lot of iron. Alrighty, big cog wheel, big cog wheel, and it's not in the right spot, that's better. It's really hard to tell which way these things are turning. Okay, through a series of gears I have slowed this down and then connected into this gearbox, which goes into this vertical gearbox, which goes into this other vertical gearbox, which is turning this, and then that right there is another gearbox is turning this chain drive right here. These two are a connected chain drive, and then that's all getting this done. And then what I did is I put another connected chain drive here. I don't really love that, but there it is. Um, so then that shaft, then these are all connected by a shaft, which connects to this cogwheel, the case chain drive, and then my two fans are right there. So everything is working great so far. All right, this was a little bit tricky, but I got a gearbox here, another gearbox there, going into there, this gearbox to a chain drive that's kind of 90 degrees to itself, which apparently you can do. And then another chain drive here, and then another chain drive underneath here to make all of these belts turn. I'm kind of proud of that for some reason. I don't know why. I feel like it was fairly compact the way I did it. Anyway, moving on. 
All right, these fans are running. They're blowing the lava to cook the terracotta. I just did a shaft from there, and then a couple of gears and a chain drive. And then here I brought this with a chain drive and this couple of little gears and stuff like that. And it's working, and I'm happy. Chain drive here, please and thank you. Thank you very much. And a chain drive. I guess I gotta go here. Good enough. Unbelievable, it's going the right direction. Well, miracle of miracles, that's going the right direction. All right, we have the final press, powered by a series of cog wheels and shafts and things. The other press is now pressing. Well, it will be pressing soon, I think. Okay, I think everything's all connected up. I brought the shaft for the grinding wheels over to this set of grinding wheels right here. And I think we are good to go. I did drop some cobblestone into it just to test it and it got stuck in this basin right here because I need to get a smart shoot. Okay, the smart shoot is installed. Then we're gonna smarten it up. Uh, we need clay and clay. And that should make it smart. Hey, look at that, a gold nugget. Now all I have to do is connect this belt to these uh, shafts here and that should turn the thing on. All right, when I put this shaft in, the whole thing should start up. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, I, all I need to do is just put an encased chain drive right here. Sorry about the noise. And then that should activate this belt and get everything moving. All right. There we are. That's grinding. We've got sand and we've got clay. It's coming in here. It's getting washed. All right, we're getting some uh, clay blocks packed there. That's what that sound is, the clinking sound. And then we'll get rid of this. And then you have to be really careful around these grinding wheels because it's so easy to hit yourself around in there. All right. And they're coming this way. They're going through here. They're getting cooked. Coming up here is red sand. Going into here. And things are coming out, but I think that this isn't going because we're getting the sticks in here. Oh, everything is going into the chest. That's why. Because I need to put a filter on this chest of these sticks that we're supposed to be getting. I'll let it run for a little while and see if we get it. There's one. Okay, that's what I wanted. Okay, so this dead bush, that's what I meant. And not sticks, they're dead bushes. Okay, and then there we go. Okay, so now that that filter's there, then the gold nugget should start going into the bin thingy mabob, the basin, and then get pressed into nuggets. Into, um, not nuggets, but what are those things called? Oh, ingots. That's right, ingots. There we go. All right. Should have a couple ingots now. Uh, why do we not have ingots? Oh, because I'm an idiot. Okay, so we have to put the ingot as our recipe filter and the ingot on the smart shoot. Otherwise, the nuggets will just fall right through. So that's what the deal is with the filters and why they're important. All right. It's looking pretty good. Wow, we've already got three gold already. <laughs> I mean, it's, I don't anticipate this being a faster farm than the iron farm by any means, but what I anticipate is having some gold to be able to go get when I need it. Okay, well, it's been a few minutes, and I have 29 gold in, in the chest. I'm happy with how this thing is working. It, could it be producing more? Absolutely. But this is producing enough for me and my purposes. So I'm happy with that. Well, guys and gals, this has been Hex. I hope you've enjoyed this episode here on the Blockheads Create. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you're having an amazing, awesome, beautiful, fantastic, gold-plated, gold, solid gold, not gold-plated, solid gold day. <laughs> and God bless.